Welcome to Venture Ventures. We are a bunch of improvisers, LARPers, and writers, lovers of stories who play in a D&D 5e campaign set in a homebrew world, and I am the Dungeon Master, Jake Friday, and I will be representing the world uh, around the players, and um, the players will be rep representing their characters. And... Um, yeah, let's go around the table and go ahead and tell us your name and the name of your character. Dave, let's start with you. Called Prodding Rod. He's a Kenku warlock and he goes by Proddy for short. Yeah. Brian. <laughs> Brian, go ahead. Oh, uh, I'm Brian, obviously, um, and I play Crispin Crispy Oakenshaft, and I'm a, a human monk. <laughs> Perfect. I'm glad you're getting used to the new moniker. Uh, uh, let's go over to Richard. Not all of our names are like shafts or rods. Don't worry. That's a good point. Yeah. Just a bunch of them. <laughs> but maybe they will be one day. We don't know. Uh, hi, my name is Richard Cardenas. Uh, I am playing Nihilus Nymerith. He is a Triton Sorcerer. Uh, maybe at this point? I don't know. Uh, he He's deformed at the moment. And um, we'll see what happens with that. <laughs> yes, we will. Lex. Uh, hi, I'm Lex. I play Ashwin, the Mouse Folk Fighter. Squeak, squeak. Squeak, squeak. Yes, indeed. Um, isn't that one of your languages? Yes. Okay. So yeah, that's just, just like saying speak. English, English? <laughs> I guess. No. <laughs> okay, let me, let me do the recap. All right, previously on Venture Ventures, the Fellowship of the Big Bed spent their first night in the Viranol Dominion, way to the north of the continent of Invir, and woke up early to find a carnival was coming to town. This was more than just a coincidence, however, as the ringmaster of the carnival, Isolde the Angel, was there to hand out some consequences uh, to two members of the party who did not show the honesty that was requ required by a uh, room that they entered the Dominion through, which was essentially like a customs type of room. Uh, and so Isolde, thinking she's a being of complete truth and, and goodness, thinks that the appearance of a being should match the darker aspects of their true nature. Because of this, many of the carnival workers exhibited uh, the twisting, which transformed them into something more closely aligned with their nature. Uh, upon arrival, Isolde said she was doing this as a favor for the Strani Playing Company and performed the twisting on Prodi and Nihilus to s different extents. Prodi received uh, big multifaceted bug eyes, Nihilus's feet turned into little hillocks on top of tall horses, and his face uh, down to his shoulders melted into something like a funhouse mirror. On all sides. So when others look at Nihilus, they see the worst version of themselves appearance-wise. And when Nihilus looks at others, he sees only what he's become. Uh, and honestly, he's starting to embrace it. Good. Uh, maybe that'll change change it. Um, after touring the carnival, the gang went in search of and quickly found the traveling merchant cart called Semple Station of Stupendous Curiosities. Uh, which was ran by an old man who introduced himself as Obadiah Semple. And Obi. Obi, sure. And uh, players also got to meet his wife, Annie, Anne or Annie, who is also just coincidentally happens to be a gelatinous cube. Um, and they asked Obadiah some questions, bought some bags of holding. You guys have the most bags of holding you have all the bags of holding um mm -hmm. and uh then orson jumped into ashwin's bag of holding and that's where we left off and the first thing that happens when he does that obadiah goes who the hell dives into a bag of holding and so right now orson is 
ass in the air trying to get into this bag of holding. It's a two foot wide diameter bag of holding. And uh, Obadiah is going on about, that reminds me of the time I met my wife. Oh, sweet Annie. And he's just going on. If you'd like to hear that story, you can listen to it. Or if you'd like to deal with uh, what you're seeing currently, um, Ashwin, uh, what do you I'm... do? This is not good, you guys. we got to get him out. Somebody help me. <laughs> uh, can I try to uh, Indiana Jones whip his ankle and yank him back out of the bag of holding? Yes, go ahead and... Um... Just do an attack. Uh... <laughs> 17. Let me look at his here AC. Yep, he's got a low AC. So um, you have it wrapped around his ankle. What's the damage on that? Uh, 1d4. Plus 4. Uh, ooh, plus 4. We'll say, just roll the 1d4 and we'll say like... You're so skilled with the whip that the plus four, you can decide whether that, in this case... Sure. Three. Okie dokie. So he takes three damage. And go ahead and make a strength check to pull him out. Oh, my strength is terrible. Ten. Uh, anybody else want to help with this whip? Breathe in there for long. He's, um, he's, seems to be trying to get fully in there, so I guess, uh, you're not making any progress here. Uh, um, I guess, uh, Nihilus, after he, like, fans himself, because he thinks this is so hot, he's gonna go over and help <laughs> pull him out. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so you're gonna help he just sees a human take <laughs> he just sees a human use a whip indiana jones style he's gonna think it's hot oh i see uh, i was like it's which reasonable. part in my brain i was just uh okay so you're gonna help uh mm -hmm. crispy go ahead and take advantage on that and roll it again went up on my keyboard there we go. 14 this time. Mm-hmm. I'm not uh, that strong. You're not, you're not making any progress because he rolled stupid high and he's a farmer. He's got farmer strength. Um, <sighs> used to carrying those hogs to slaughter. And... I, Ashwin, could you, can you just flip that bag upside down? Maybe he'll fall <laughs> out of it. <laughs> then all my stuff goes everywhere. <sighs> well, I guess there's no help in it. He's so, just going to be in the bag. About that time you hear nothing but you see his arms start coming out and he starts pulling back and um oh my god where is that here we go he is going to take basically he comes out of the bag with a head at biting him another head biting him on the side of his face <laughs> And it's got wings coming out of its ears, and its eyes are milky white, and its skin is kind of hanging off. It looks undead. Uh, this is a varguil, and it's biting his face. Its wings are kind of... they don't look fully formed. They're kind of damaged or um, just not fully developed. Uh, and so... This was Ashwin's bag? Yeah. Okay, Nihilus is definitely going to scream, What the fuck, Ashwin? I would just go, Ho! And then whip that thing that. instead. <laughs> go ahead, Ashwin. There's just a lot of stuff in here, okay? I don't know what goes in there sometimes. Uh, How big is this thing? It's... Mary Kondo would be very disappointed. <laughs> it's a, uh, It's the size of a human head. It's just... It's making all kinds. It's no longer attached to his face, but now it's just kind of flopping on the ground. It 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 can't seem to fly very much. And Prady and uh, Nihilus, this reminds you obviously of Max Morningbrow, your handler, who is a oh. flying head, except his wings uh, 
come out of his eyebrows, and he's not undead. And he's a little bit grumpy, but he's definitely not undead. This thing looks very undead, and it's just kind of doing zombie type <laughs> on the ground. Um, and Orson, uh, he's bleeding a lot. Um, he took a good amount of damage there, 15 points of damage. Oh, God. And uh, he's, he's, I guess I'll do an Orson impression now. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my. There's a head in there. Ashwin, did you know that that was there? Um, I mean, it is just like a dimension to another plane of existence, so <laughs> I don't know what comes out of it sometimes. Uh, oh, that's it, fair. Maybe it just might be a good idea to flip it upside down and dump all your stuff everywhere. To... <laughs> that's what you're carrying around. <laughs> well, we're out of the bag. Everything's fine now. Let's just deal with the, the head. Um, I'll uh, go ahead and do a cure wounds on Orson. Oh, that's mighty nice. I, if you don't mind, I'm not going to look at you while you do that, but I want to thank you. Nihilus? Uh, I changed my mind. <laughs> oh no I'm beautiful I'll... the way that I am and I will not be taking any it's of not, that it's not it's not your you really you really aren't <laughs> you're, you're, <laughs> you're, you're, I, I hate I hate to break it to your friend but but uh, man you're hard to look at it's <clears throat> a nihilist I don't know that he you... just like nihilist just kind of like turns and walks the opposite direction a few feet uh, Nihilus, it's not about you. It's I see my face and it looks hideous when I look at you. Well, maybe we all just need to face our demons. Hmm? How about that? Oh, man. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I just wish I didn't have to face yours, too. <laughs> <laughs> Go ahead, Ashwin. Um, Did you say want to say you something? Now. <laughs> not looking great. Uh... <laughs> So Orson is um, patting his face and, like, trying to find something to st uh, stop the bleeding. And at this point, Obadiah is like, well, that's enough of uh, this conversation, guys. I'm going to move on and down the road with uh, my wife. There, can I... What was that, Ashwood? Do you want the head? <laughs> Uh, isn't that your head? No, it just came out of my bag. It's not mine, though. You can take it if you want. I was uh, mighty curious. <laughs> have no... Maybe you would like it. Uh, who? Your wife. Oh, Annie. Annie, do you want this? What? Yeah, I don't know what you do with it either, but it's just... <laughs> Could could I look around and see if there's anything that I can like fit in my hand, like a rock or a stick or anything? Uh, sure. Make a perception check. Real low. Oh, okay. Yeah, I'm not good at these, so it'll be fine. It's super low DC. Uh, a total of eight. Beat that five DC. I Yay. can't believe it was that close. <laughs> but uh, yeah, there's a there's brand. You're in the middle of a forest. And right off the road, there's rocks and a Okay, uh, I will grab one and throw it into Annie. Okay. <laughs> uh, when you do that, Obadiah looks at you and pauses for a good, like, ten seconds. And his face just goes blank. What are you doing, Nihilus? What are you Wait, doing? Can we all just take a moment and... And, and see that Obadiah is not reacting. And he doesn't say anything. And he snaps his fingers and his cart rolls up. Uh, and he goes back uh, into the cart. And the cart magically starts moving down the road. <laughs> uh, Bye. And well, that's one way to say goodbye, Nihilus. You might want to work on that. It's not... <laughs> Listen, Nihilus, what if I had wanted to buy something else from Obadiah? <laughs> okay, well, first of all, Obadiah was rude. Second of all, that cube was rude. Third of all, the cube wasn't real. It was not his wife. Let's just <laughs> let's just acknowledge that. Well, I, um, they, they may have had a ceremony. It seemed like they did. <laughs> 
Um, Nihilus, one of these days you're going to get us into a fight that we don't want to be in. You're going to provoke or, someone. Or will we want to be in it? Well, I have no intention of punching <laughs> not a good point. in this cube today, so <laughs> this was not the fight that I wanted to be in. Glad it didn't happen. But I suggest we move on down the road if our business with Obi is now complete. If and Obi wants it. to be married to a gelatinous cube, that's his prerogative, okay? It's not up to us to provoke him and make fun of him for that. That's fine. You can believe whatever you want to believe. <laughs> so, uh, Ashwin, did you want to say something? I know there was a lot of crosstalk there. Um, um, no. Um, we should keep going, you guys. Okay. Make sure everything's okay. Do we want to do, do an Ashwin head bag inventory? <laughs> and what do you do? You, you watch your head? Is it just flopping on the ground like a dead fish? Yeah, my head. <laughs> you can have it. Do you want it? Why? You don't know how what? it got in there. Why would I want a dead head? <laughs> I don't know. I don't know what you'd like. You haven't told me these things. That's fair. I don't want any undead heads. I'm good on those, especially ones that fly. I don't appreciate that very much because I can't fly. <laughs> so the head's just going to stay on the ground, right? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Uh, Orson. Just blame that one on Orson. <laughs> Does let me? Do you guys remember? Can I? Can I do like an arcane check or something to see? Like maybe I get some advice of what to do with it. Maybe there's like a special way to bury it, or um, I'm trying to think. There's no real reason why you would know anything about an undead flying head, right? In your backstory, no. Like even if you rolled. A uh, nat twenty on an Arcana check. It's not like something. Uh, I was just trying to sure. see if there was something we we're supposed to do with it. Uh, well, not not unless you want there to be. But Orson, I gotta look if he has a. Um, he bought a bag of holding, right? Yes. Yeah. Yeah, he did too. He's gonna put it he in got, his bag of holding. He got the ratty one. Right. <laughs> He's putting it in his bag of holding. And let me add that to his equipment real quick. One second. All right, Varguil head. That bit face. Varguil head. Oh, that's what it's called? Varguil head? Bit face. Sure. I mean, it's kind of redundant because Varguil is a head, but... Uh, okay. So... Uh, it's also a Gundam. Is it? So... So this is... I'm spelling it correctly. <laughs> it's V-A-R-G-O-U-I-L-L-E. Cute. Uh, All right, guys, let's uh, keep walking to uh, Mostashar and see about Alu. Got to rescue him. So Still the next job to do. The next uh, town on the road is Glodopol, uh, which I believe Obadiah had mentioned. And mm -hmm. uh, on your way there, it's probably a couple hours walk um, to get there. And in the distance, all of you see a kind of on the side of the road. First, you see and hear a uh, a familiar person. You also the clinking. There's a lot of like tink, 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 um, familiar to you from your train ride and your uh, just before you entered the Dominion. The fellow who who disappeared. Um, uh, the fellow who disappeared on you guys is fighting this giant uh, plant creature thing that has these points coming off of it like uh, rosebud. Um, yeah, like rosebuds, but huge. And it's orange at the bottom on these, uh, these buds, and then it goes to a yellow tip. 
and um, this thing is 10 feet tall and uh, like eight feet wide and it seems to be moving and he is, it looks like Inquisitor Velov is fighting off this beast, this plant beast uh, and uh, he's about 100 feet away. Uh, as you were cresting this hill, you started hearing the clinking and then you came to see it and uh, it's got vines lashing at Inquisitor Velov and um, you're starting to smell something and it's not a good smell. It smells horrible. Um, is this directly in our path? Yes. Oh. Can we I... stealth around it? You can if you want. <laughs> you can if it's you want. It's not our problem. It's up to you. Uh, Do we have any reason to be helping this folk? No, he ran out on us, so... <laughs> exactly! We don't need to help him! <laughs> all right. Okay. Um, Guys, I mean, what are the odds that we're all... All five of us are going to sneak around this thing? Like, can we just, can we just well, take it out? It doesn't seem that powerful. <laughs> you can try what you want. <laughs> you cannot just go around it. <laughs> <laughs> I'll follow the group's decision on this one. What? Happened? Let's play Bugabooey for it. Ah, no. <laughs> <laughs> what is Bugabooey? Bob Baba Booey? Bubble Booby? Bubble Bubble? What was that game we played? <laughs> In the first episode? I forget. What language is this? <laughs> I, I've never I heard of this know. game. We uh, probably should decide pretty soon, though, because otherwise this, this man is going to get eaten by a plant. And uh, he's... Nihilus, Nihilus says, fine, we can fight it. It's up to you guys. You can stealth if you want around it. Try to. No, I'll just walk up. And so there's... It's going to ultimately take longer to try to stealth around <laughs> it and then ultimately end up having to fight it. Uh, huh? Yeah, just to give you some more information in, on that, it, this, this uh, road is uh, Thornbolt Road. It goes east to west across the Dominion. And uh, in this portion of it, it's pretty thick forest on either side of you. Uh, so, you know, uh, what lurks in ye forest? Who knows? Um, Nihilus is just going to walk towards Velov, and he's going to say, All right, Velov, we're here, you asshole. <laughs> he's not, he's so distracted. Um, <laughs> uh, about that time, you see Velov go down, and one of the, the vines picks him up, and um, I'd say the thing is probably a good 20 feet closer to you now. Uh, it picks him up and puts it inside of this plant. This plant just envelops it. And the smell coming off of this thing is that of rotting corpses. Um, and right before Velov gets completely uh, enveloped, what's the, like, who's in front? What's the marching order? I, like I would have, I'll say Prati's in front. Oh, okay, then I'll be right behind. Oh, uh, I guess, yeah, I guess uh, Nihilus. We don't have to be in a single single line. No, I'd be up in front usually, too. Yeah, it's probably mm -hmm. like 10, 15 foot wide. Uh, so right before he gets completely enveloped, um, you see a cute little, cute's relative, a tiny little brain with legs kind of appear right next to the corpse, uh, to this giant plant thing. Uh, and this thing is running away from, uh, this plant, and it is running towards you guys. Oh. What, um, what is thy actions before well, we... Well, I'm just gonna unsling my bow and shoot at the plant. Okay, um, yeah, we'll roll initiative now. All right. All right. Ten. Hold on. Hold off on the giving real quick. Oh, sorry. Not a problem. Okay. Oh, okay. Uh, so the way 
we're gonna do this is I'm just gonna say 25 to 20 and you tell me if you're in a certain range and I'm gonna go down I'm gonna name a range and you tell me if you're in there so 25 to 20 22 22 crispy Uh, 20 to 15. Me. What's your number, Ashwin? 13. Oh, uh, so nobody's 20 to 15? D oh, wow. It's okay. It's been a long weekend. <laughs> I, I know. Uh, I can't imagine. My brain would be dead. Uh, so 13, we'll go 15 to 10 right now. Anyone? I'm, uh, 10. Ashwin, Dort, Ten, Roddy. Uh, what did you get, Nihilus? Nine. Nine. Nihilus is Orson. Okay. All right. Crispin, Crispy, you are first. Go ahead and have at this thing. All right. I'm going to use my Kensei shot with my bonus action and take two shots. Uh, the first one is a 16 to hit. Yep. It's a giant thing. Yeah. Okay. That does nine points of damage. Okay. Second shot is better. 19 to hit. And that is 13 points of damage. Okay. So these two shots hit it, and obviously when you're using your bow, you're focusing on this thing a lot more, and you're noticing uh, that it has various corpses already in it, um, in various states of decay. And uh, the closer it's getting to you guys, the worse the smell is getting, and it's a pretty nauseating smell. And um, Velov's body is fully inside the thing now. Um, and uh, it is marching towards you. You're not sure how it's sensing you guys, but uh, it seems to have uh, a beat on you. And, uh, okay, anything else, Crispy? How quickly can is it moving towards us? Well, it is moving. Um, not, it's not even close to as fast as you. Well, yeah, not, not much is. Um, mm. And uh, I would say, how do I put this? I mean, it's still like a good like 70 or 80 feet from us, right? Yeah, just like 80 feet away. And All right. Um, I'll stay where I am. That's, yeah. that's all. I mean, no. I'm not going to move at all. Okay. And it is uh, the flowering plant turn it's gonna move closer to you guys it gets within about 60 feet closer and um it actually uh takes one of its tendrils reaches into its body and it pulls out a corpse and drops it and it starts to animate and walk uh so um one perfect just gotta check this ability okay of course a zombie would be that low all right and that is its turn actually no um you see one of the tentacles it's it um it's gonna reach into the side of the road off the side kind of there's a little <clears throat> trench next to it and it pulls out what looks like uh from this vantage point a small being of some sort out of the ground um and there's barely anything left in it. It's almost a skeleton. Pulls it up and puts it inside its body. 
Uh, <laughs> and that's its turn. Gross. And it is now <laughs> Ashwin's turn. Uh, how far is it again? So now it is 60 feet. Okay. Yeah. Um, dang it. I don't want to fight it. <laughs> <laughs> you don't have to. Uh, I'm going to take out my crossbow. Okay. Use and put the crossbow arrows in it and shoot it. Do it. Okay. Hopefully, I'll hit it. Who knows? If I could find it and read it. Oh, yeah, you're on your phone or are you on your computer? Um, I have my iPad with D&D Beyond, yeah. but I can't find my bow. Okay, let me look. Oh, I found it. Okay. So I rolled a 10. Uh, it's quite a large thing, so it's not that hard to hit, but uh, that's still, uh, you're, you're, maybe you're not used to using your bow, but um, it goes off wide. And I believe you have multi-attack, is that correct? Um, yeah. Uh, yes. Do I have to use it? Uh. Oh, I... wait, it's if I don't move, do I use it? I forgot what it was. Um, let me look at your, let me look at your character sheet. What kind of crossbow is it? Oh, I didn't use my crossbow. I just used a longbow. Oh, gotcha. They have a crossbow, too. <laughs> Do you want it? <laughs> <laughs> Making trades <laughs> during battle. <laughs> I'm gonna look at this stuff. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> I always enjoy a good Little Mermaid joke. <laughs> Okay. A little harder. Mm -hmm. I think I could at... just try shooting it again. Yeah, I think you have... Yeah, you have extra attack if you're a fighter. Okay, well then, yeah. I'm, a... okay. I'm rusty, guys. I'm gonna try it again. Okay. <laughs> I also got a 10. <laughs> Your your in, internal battle within is keeping you from truly committing to this fight, and uh, these two, <laughs> two arrows go wide. Uh, do you want to? You have your movement and a bonus action, I believe. What would you like to do? Um, can I climb a tree? Can you climb a tree? Yeah. Um. Yeah, yes, you can. Uh. What's your movement? 25. Okay. Mm. Little mousy legs. I'm out. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so it's easy enough. Uh, you're in the middle of a forest. You find the nearest tree. Um, let me... You're, you're going to have less than half of your movement... Uh, to get up there and um, so yeah we'll say uh, you get onto the first uh, part of this tree these trees are one of the trees has fallen over and it's leaning on another and so you're kind of on the the uh, one that's um, braced against it right now and that's where your, where your turn will end so it is now the little creature, the brain creature, running towards you guys. Um, and this thing is much quicker than the uh, plant, and uh, it is making up some ground. Uh, okay, it's now within 20 feet of you guys. 
and um, that's where it's gonna nope it's going to and it's turn there okay uh, Prodi Prodi gets out his rod and he he tries to shoot it uh, well you tell me I, I rolled a 10 for uh, the first Eldritch Blast. I'm what assuming that doesn't this? hit. <laughs> Stop I'm, it. I'm, I'm, assuming that doesn't, I'm assuming that doesn't do it. So you're Eldritch Blasting it? I'm Eldritch Blasting it, yeah. You see some black, black crackling energy and going at the... Uh, I'm sorry, repeat. The, large, the larger creature. Repeat the... Uh, uh, what the you roll was a 10. Yeah, that... Uh, the second roll was a 14. Yes, that will hit. Okay, Ooh. so it only did four damage. So. Okay. But, uh, and then um, that will be it. I'll. Where Where is everybody? We're We're. You're kind of in a line. Like, Ni- Nihilus is in front of me. I'll just I'll just go up to where Nihilus is. I'll just move up to where he is. Okay. Yeah. You guys are basically other than Ashwin, are all kind of at the same level in my mind. Yeah, we're standing next to each other. So, uh, okay. Okay. Linked arms. Yeah, exactly. That's that's it. You were skipping down uh-huh. the road, yellow brick road style, uh, before right. you came I upon this. I guess Nihilus them. is Toto. We're off to save Alu. <laughs> uh, Nihilus, it is your turn. Toto, I mean, I'm sorry. Uh-huh. Okay, so uh, Nihilus is first going to shout, Come on, everyone, get your heads out of your asses. And then he's going to cast a uh, melt minute meter, minute meter. Sure. Uh, That's a good one. Okay, so I'm going to cast it. And then as my bonus action, I'm going to send two of the meteors, one flying towards the plant creature and one flying towards the zombie. Okay. And you still have that tiny brain creature that's closer, um, tw- within 20 feet of you, FYI. If that changes, I'm gonna send it to the plant creature, okay. <laughs> to the zombie. Go ahead. And um, uh, it's a deck save of 14. Okay. Nope. Fail. On both of them. Uh. Yep. What? Oh, fail is good. Are you guys? Wait, they failed or or? No, they failed. You didn't fail. Oh, they failed. Ooh, That's good. Okay. <laughs> okay. 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 Uh, I think this is two two d six uh damage. I think. I think. I think. Let me just pull this up again. Yes. Where is my d six? Here you are. Um. So. The one going over... Oh, whoops. 2d6. Uh, okay, so that's nine damage to the plant. And then the other one is going to get four damage, the zombie. Okay. And that one shot takes down the zombie. It is no longer moving, and oh. it's blasted apart. Wow. Okay. Uh, Nihilus gets giddy and claps. Nice shot, Nihilus. Thanks. Okay. Do it again. Back to the plant. Anything else? <laughs> uh, no, I'm going to stay where I'm at. Okay. It's now Orson's turn, and he is going to pull up his character sheet. And... Go, guys, I don't... My face is still bleeding, right? And then he's <laughs> going to... Yeah, don't be an ass to me next time, and I'll heal you. Oh, okay. And he's going to... Creature 10-foot cube. Damn. A lot of cool spells. He's going to... I'm definitely not going to do that. He's going to Eldritch Blast. So you watch me play D&D with myself. Okay. <laughs> mm-hmm, mm-hmm. 
both of them well, hit. I want to see how the master does it. Master, I'm... Ooh! Pretty good rolls for him. Looks like the master did well. Mm-hmm. <laughs> uh, I have mixed feelings about it. Uh, okay, 15. Because he doesn't have agonizing blast. So everyone else is just like silent while he <laughs> he does something mysterious. We don't know what happened. Uh, he shoots zap, zap. Eldritch Blast at the plant uh, and is uh, trying to uh, trying to stem the bleeding on his face still, and that's mm. going to be. Oh, let me check real quick. His actions, so I don't shortchange you guys. He's going to back up. He's going to back up 30 feet. All right. It is Crispy's turn again. Um... So I start slinging the bow onto my back again as I turn to Nihilus and I say, my head's not in my ass. <laughs> I'm, um, I'm going to try and punt the brain as I run past it. <laughs> I don't Is that just like a it's... downward strike? <laughs> just, just a melee. I'm going to try to try to kick it. Yep. Uh, just a punt. Give it. A, that's a 12 to hit. That is its armor class. Ooh. Um, so that does... Seven points of damage. Okay. But then I keep on running. Um, Are you going to disengage? I don't have to because I'm mobile and I hit it. Oh, you have um, a mobile feat? I do. Oh, I didn't um, know that. So then I keep on running and I uh, jump kick the giant plant with <laughs> my second attack. And that is in that one. <laughs> Bummer. Okay. Um. Yeah, that's going to miss. Uh, <laughs> cool, cool. Um, as I as I sail past it and land awkwardly on the ground uh, next to it, instead of hitting it, um, I'm going to... Let's see, I'll do Step of the Wind and go another 50 feet past it. Okay. So... Uh, Nihilus turns to Prodi and he's going to say, run! wait, is he leaving us? <laughs> how, did he, how did he miss that giant plant creature? <laughs> he just saw me sail through the air. <laughs> he did get the brain, though. <laughs> um, they spent a lot of time at the, the monk training place, drop-kicking uh, brains. <laughs> yeah, you should ask him about that next time. Uh uh, Brian, keep track of that, of where you are. You're 50 feet beyond this thing. Um, yep. And mm, I'm going to make it 30 feet. Okay, 30? 30. 30 it is. You restore some confidence in Nihilus. <laughs> <laughs> Way to go, Crispy! <laughs> Play it off like I was just trying to get, a pa get past it anyway. I was just <laughs> jumping past it. I wasn't attacking at all. Just jumping past it. It is now the flower's turn, and uh, it's really flower quite French. <laughs> Pardon me. It's no, it smells French. pungent. <laughs> it smells terrible. It's getting worse as it's getting closer. It's quite beautiful though. the 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 buds of the actual flower are are have quite a vibrant color to them. It's just all the rotting corpses uh, tangled yeah. inside that's causing the smell. Um, sure. Sure. Okay. It's going to get closer, and it's going to put another uh, zombie out from its body, and, and it's going to grab a corpse uh, from deep beneath the earth, uh... And uh, it comes up with bones and nothing much. Still stuffs it, stuffs it in its body. And uh, when it does that, you guys see that some of the damage you're doing to it um, just kind of 
closes up a tad bit. Hmm. Uh, oh, I have a question that I should have asked when I did my turn. Yeah. Um, did it seem susceptible to what I did? It's a fire damage. It um, it it looked that damage did seemed like it was as effective as the other damages you've been seeing. Okay. Uh, okay. And let me roll that real quick. Happy roll. All right. Now, Ashwin, it is your turn. You are on the fallen tree that's braced against a living tree. All right. I'm going to try the bow again. <laughs> <laughs> this time I'm going to aim for the zombie thing that just came out of the flower. Okay. I'm going to pray that it works. <laughs> um, I got a nine. <laughs> <laughs> Luckily for you, this zombie is moving incredibly slowly. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> All right. And uh, somehow your little mouse arms nail it with this arrow. And what's the damage on that? Ooh, that is 1d8 plus 4, so 10. Okay, you kill it. It falls to the ground like the nice. other zombie you saw. Uh, so. Look at I killed it. Did you see that? We're so proud of you. Uh, anything go, else? Go, baby, Go. Um, and now I'm going to try to aim for the flower. Hopefully this time it will work. Okay. Uh, just to give you, uh, remind you that the brain is still there. <laughs> it is still. There's a brain. There's a brain. <laughs> There's a brain. There's a brain. It. And it's closer to. Uh... I the brain. Pardon me? I thought we killed the brain. No. no, I kicked it, but I didn't kill it. I tried to punt it. Oh. As I ran past. <laughs> Unfortunately, I just kicked it. It did damage. Not my brain. I did hurt it, yeah. I'll go for the flower. <laughs> oh, <okay>. Yes. <laughs> oh, wow. Um, That's a 13. Okay, yep. That'll hit. Yay. Oh, um... So, 12. 12. Okay, anything else you'd like to do? Climb back, climb further into the tree? Um, actually, I'm probably going to somersault off and jump down. Okay, are you going to join them back on the road, or Yeah, I think we could eventually try to get closer to the flower. Okay, uh, so that's 25 feet, uh, and... You're going to probably end your turn about 10 feet within this brain thing. Because um, you went off to the side and then you're uh, going forward. So is that something you want to do or do you want to that's fine. make it a little further? Uh, like, no, that, that's good Okay. for now. Okay. And the brain, tiny brain thing, uh, gets kicked and spins in the air, but it doesn't move any, uh, distance. Maybe it's a couple feet. Uh, and it's going to, um, since you're within 10 feet of it, Ashwin, you're closest, it is going to try and... Uh, devour your intellect. And... Oh. <laughs> now, by comparison, how big is this brain? Oh, this brain is like a, uh, a football size. So Ashwin is... How tall are you? Two feet. Two or three feet, I think it is. 
like half the size of her. Yeah. <laughs> and so that requires you to make an intelligent saving throw, Ashwin. Oh. How does how do I do that? So um, roll a d20 and then. On D and D Beyond, there's a saving throws box. Well, I rolled an 18. Woo! Nice. So there's a saving. Where's... Do you see the savings throw? It's right under, like your strength <laughs> ability score. Yes. Okay. Yes. Um. And then, do you have a modifier for that intelligence saving throw? No. <laughs> okay. 18 will be enough, though, and. Yay. Um, you are not affected by this psionic attack, uh, but it's still going to try and claw you. Uh, oh. Fuck. <laughs> That's always good. 11? <laughs> Does an 11 mm -hmm. hit? No. I didn't think so. Ha-ha. And so now this thing is next to you, but it's not going to move because it still wants to devour your intellect? Proddy. Proddy decides he's going to do another Eldritch Blast. He's going to try to get the flower first, and he's going to miss for sure again. <laughs> then he's going to aim at the brain if as long as he has line of sight. Uh, as long as like Ashwin's not in between. Okay. So, and that was a third, he rolled a 13 for that. So I don't know if that hits or not. It does. Nice. Take three damage. I'm rolling terrible. <laughs> and Proddy's like, huh, take that. <laughs> uh, perfect. So you've, he probably heard that someone say that somewhere, maybe a kid in Anista, and you hear Proddy mimic that. Uh... Take that. Yeah. <laughs> Hey, you take that. <laughs> okay. So, Orson's turn. Jake's turn again, I guess. Not my turn? Oh, yeah. Sorry. Wow. Uh, I'm ugly, but I'm not invisible. Yeah, j just, that's my bad. It wasn't on purpose. <laughs> uh, don't take it personally. Uh, can we can we recap what Nihilus looks like right now? He's like a silverly, silverly. He looks like, like your worst nightmare. Like it's, in, it's personal for everyone. Yeah, oh, if you right, look right. at him, you see the most horrifying. It's he's got like fun. It's like he's got a funhouse <laughs> mirror on his head down to his shoulders. So for me, when I look at him with my deformed bug eyes, I see like just terrifying, an insane, like f terrifying fly creature. Okay. <sighs> Oh, yeah. Nihilus is now at this point, like, feeling himself. Like, he's kind of into it now, so. <laughs> uh, sure. Do you want to? Oh, yes. I'm going to do something. Um, how <laughs> far away is the brain from where I'm at? Because I have not moved. Uh, it's it's um, 20 feet away. Oh, okay. Um, I can do that. I have 25 movement. So I want to run up to the brain, and I'm going to try to be super cool about it. I'm going to do like a cartwheel, and I'm going to put my hand on the brain and cast a uh, Shocking Grasp. Okay. What does that require? That is a, I believe it's a saving... Uh, 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 uh. Oh, it's a spell attack, so I have to roll. Okay. Uh, not a nat 20, but 20. Yes, that will hit. Okay, so then you take 2d8 damage. Or not you, but the thing. The thing. Um, that is going to be uh, 14. Uh, okay. And with your shock and grasp, this thing fries. And whatever fried brain smells like, that's what you smell. And it goes limp next to you and Ashwin. It is no longer moving. A little trail of smoke rises from its dead, tiny little weird. Uh, and um, I'm going to say, uh, how about that for food for thought? And then, um, <laughs> and then I'm going to, as a bonus action, uh, throw two more meteors at the plant. And it's a deck save. Okay. Um, 
So I assume you're using like a sorcerer uh, ability here. Is Minute Meteors like a... Can you cast it in a bonus action or... Um, I have six of them. I've used two so far, so I'm trying to use two more. And they're... they're and it's I bonus. can throw them as a bonus action. Oh, yeah. okay. Cool. Uh, nice. And those automatically hit or you have to roll for them? Uh, you save. Deck save. All right. Thank you for the reminder. Uh, that's a save. And saves again. So, boo. Does he take he half? Did more than 14? Yeah. Uh, it was eight. Okay. He rolled Yeah, in... you'll take... Yeah, I believe you take half. Okay. So, uh, half of seven, three. Okay. And is that your turn? Can I back up five feet of remaining yeah, movement? Yeah, Okay, then I will do that. Uh, so you are now... And then I'm going to stretch my back because I haven't moved like that ever. <laughs> um, you're now like... This thing got closer. So you're like 20 feet away from this uh, flower thing and the smell's getting worse. Uh, okay, Orphan's mm -hmm. turn. Orson. Hold on. Maybe you can speak with this thing. You can speak to plants? He's got a bunch He's of weird shit. <laughs> Ooh. Uh, sorry, guys. I'm trying to play... Do a bunch of things here. Um, nope, that won't do it. Okay. When in doubt, Eldritch Blast. Yep. Yep. Orson! Shoots two Eldritch Blasts that you've seen before. I believe you described them as purple, if my memory uh, serves me correctly. But um, both of them hit this plant and do a little bit of damage to it. And he goes, guys, my face is still bleeding. <laughs> <laughs> Nihilus is still just like turning that. his head and ignoring him. Okay. And it is Crispy's turn. Woo. Um, I'm going to pull my flail out from my belt, run up to its backside, or whatever I can figure for its backside is, and um, try to thwack it. Okay. doesn't really have a backside. Ooh, I think that's going to do it. 17 plus 7. Yeah. 20. Yeah. Um, so I'm going to one with the blade it. So that's going to be a key. Key. Key, key. It's that and that. <sighs> <laughs> a one and a two on my damage rolls so that's uh <laughs> seven points of damage whopper um and then i'm going to try to hit it a bunch more uh so first unarmed strike and then blows for two more first one does hit 16 plus seven uh second one is an 19 and third is a 16 all of them hit. Sweet. <clears throat> um, so that is a total of 6, 10, 14, plus 12. That's a total of 26 points of damage. You. Um, and I'm going to burn one more key with the last hit and try to stunning strike it. Okay. So and it needs to do a constitution save. Okay. Let me check its constitution. So none of you can see it because I'm on the other side of it. <laughs> but I just did a whole bunch to the back. <laughs> we just we just see the plant kind of like <laughs> twitching. You see plant juice like gushing. Yeah, you see some juice. You see some like <laughs> plant matter. Maybe like a little bit of a leaf fly in the air and float down. Uh, does seventeen save? It does. Okay. And 
Is that your turn? That's my turn. Okay, it is now the flower's turn. And it's got that done. It probably won't pay any attention to me. I don't know why it would. Uh, well, it doesn't really have much intelligence, but... Uh, <laughs> to just carve out a section of its back? It's <laughs> <laughs> I was being facetious. <laughs> And uh, it does its normal thing. This time it doesn't dig into the ground for anything. Uh, but you see kind of the digestion uh, that you'd seen previously of these corpses it's been putting into itself occur, and it heals a little bit. Uh, okay. And it's definitely bloodied for a plant. I don't know what that would Juiced. be. Uh there's some sap coming out of it. Sure. Yeah, it's well it's well juiced. Ew. <laughs> it's a lot of like lettuce bruising going on. <laughs> it's gonna make a uh, multi attack tentacle attack on you, Crispy. Nah, I don't know why I would. It's fine. <laughs> okay. Two. 22, 16, and 22. Uh, the 22 is hit. Okay. The 16 does not. Eighteen damage as these tentacles whip out at you. Um, you can appreciate the whippiness of them with your <laughs> abilities with whip. She's sure. like, this plant knows what it's doing with a whip. Uh, and it hurts. And it hurts. Ooh, did you guys hear that whip cracking sound? I wonder what's going on on the other side. <laughs> I think Chrissy's winning. Yeah. And uh, for each of the, make two uh, con saving throws here. Okay, dokie. Uh, 16. What was the second one? You cut out. 12. 16 and 12. Uh, the, the last lash, you feel this stinging pain enter into your bloodstream. And, uh, I'll roll this. 14 poison damage as this thing poisons oh. you. Oh. And then do that. And you, did you start your turn within, uh, did you run up to it and then hit it? Yeah. Okay. Uh, but you, okay. Yeah. And that's it. For the corpse flower, Ashwin. How close am I to the flower again? 20 feet. Okay, I can make it. So I'm going to run up to it um, and just start attacking it, this time with my rapier. Have at it. Ooh, I got a 19. Yep. Which is a critical hit for me. Ooh. Um, and Champion. that's also still plus seven. So double your die. Or just roll twice. Oh. The damage die? Yeah, so anything you roll, you just double for a crit, or you can just uh, roll the damage die twice. A lot of people will just uh, double the dice, um, but it's up to you. You roll it twice. So that's a six and a five. Uh, oh, okay, well. so 11 damage. Yes. Is there any modifier on that? There should be. Uh, they are. It's um. It's plus six, so that's. Seventeen. Eleven plus twelve. Eleven plus what? Eleven plus twelve. Okay. 
This thing's looking pretty bad. Um. What else? Uh, you said it's like it's spewing out like these creatures that are coming in. Am I close to that? thing that's spewing it out uh you're close this thing's very large so uh you can see now that you're closer that the corpses are kind of in its central mass um and uh that's where it's reaching its vines into to pull them out or to bring them in uh okay yeah so that general area i'm gonna try to you know stab it okay Stabby stab. Need a good stabbing. Um, throw the ten on that one. Nope. Uh, the stench is overcoming you as you swing your rapier. And uh, do you have anything else you'd like to do? Um, you know what? I'll action surge. Hey. -o. I'm gonna try that again. I'm not going down. <laughs> yep. Ain't no quitter. Oh, my, my dice is a quitter. Alright. Um, <laughs> I got a 15. That hits. Ooh. Sweet. Six. Uh, 12. 12 damage. Okay. And you get another... You get two attacks per action, so now you have... Your action surge, so now you have another hit. Still left. Take this plant. <laughs> she's just probably flipping all over the place. She's so excited. Sure. Uh, 22? Yep. And ele uh, 11 damage. Okay. Uh, is, and I think that's it for your turn, is that correct? Yes. Uh, okay, Intellect Devourer is dead. Prodi? Um, okay, so Prodi's gonna still wail away on it with uh, Eldritch Blast, the, the flower. Um, so I rolled uh, 19 and a, a 14, so both of them I think hit. Yep. And uh, the damage is a uh, total of 19. Describe oh, wow. your killing blow, sir. Prodi goes, whenever I miss, it just becomes more, <laughs> more likely that I'll hit the next time. <laughs> oh, no. That's how did, logic works. Did we all hear that? This plant's <laughs> this plant's gonna have to pull itself out of itself to because it's dead now. Are you are Wait. you are you transmitting this to them? Yeah, <laughs> to all of you hear it. Oh no! Oh boy! And this thing falls limp to the ground. The <laughs> oh that was it's such good timing. That was a first person view of what the plant sees. Yeah. That's that's wow. such good timing. Uh it looks at Ashwin's face as it And um <clears throat> kind of all of the corpses kind of fall start falling out of it. Whatever was keeping the corpses inside, inc including Inquisitor Velov. Uh, no longer has life to keep it in, and so these things start falling out of it. Uh, and I think we're out of combat. Yay. Um, I, uh, Nihilus would like to approach Crispin to heal him. Oh, thanks. Um, because he took it. a lot of damage. <laughs> I love uh, Shoot. <laughs> yeah, because he... He's insulting, but like he has a whip, so <laughs> um I'll do I'll do a level three cure wounds on him. Uh d might might appreciate that. Mm-hmm. Mm hmm And the way that I'm gonna do it, or the way that Nihilus is gonna do it, is he's gonna go, <laughs> he's gonna go up to uh Crispin and he's gonna like put his head in his hands and give him a kiss on the forehead. 
My eyes are closed the entire time. <laughs> uh, okay, so that's... Oh, that's not a very good roll. Let me see what my modifier is on that. <laughs> <laughs> Plus three. Uh, so it's only ten. Yeah, I'll take it. I, I just rolled a, a healing light. One of my healing lights uh, on him, and I got six. So. Nice. Thank you, guys. That's... Yeah. Hey, uh, guys, my face is still bleeding. Yeah, Nihilus looks over at her <laughs> and he doesn't say anything. <laughs> <laughs> oh. It's like, I, I healed you a little bit. <laughs> oh, you? I thought you I, healed... I, I, I felt it. I felt it. Did you heal Orson or Crispy? Crispy. Oh, okay. Yeah. yeah. All right. Doesn't Orson have uh. his own healing spells? Now I uh, now I feel better, and I'm gonna go ahead and start uh, patting things down, including the. Uh, I'm gonna start with the unconscious in Inquisitor Veloth. I'm going through his pockets before waking him up. <laughs> yes. Okay. <laughs> let me. Did you say unconscious Velov? Isn't he? He's dead. Oh. Even oh. Better. Oh. You know, I didn't. Ass I didn't assume he was dead. <laughs> He was digested in that short period of time? No, he wasn't digested, but... Oh, he was killed and then swallowed? Yeah. So oh. he was fighting it. What a waste. He went down, then as he was getting sucked in, this brain thing appeared right next to him. That's what you saw. Uh, Orson does not have oh. healing. Oh, that's too bad. Nihilus, can you <laughs> heal me? Um, I can use another one I'll, of my healing light on him if you want. I'll be. I'll, I'm gonna do a second level cure wounds on him. <laughs> I thank you. And four for me. Um, that's seven from me. Oh my! I feel so much better. I've. T I can't remember what he sounds like. I'm he just... sounds more like this. There you go. That's fantastic. <laughs> there, there it is. <laughs> that is it. Nailed it. All right. Uh, okay, now to the looting. So, um, to the body. There's a bunch. Of, there's a bunch of sh uh, mangled shit in there from different dead things. Are there any coin purses? Uno momento. Uh, four gold pieces. I actually did this ahead of time, so I can see Ooh. it now. Uh, out of the various bodies, there's four gold pieces, two silver pieces on one of the bodies, three silver pieces on another body, nine gold pieces on another body, one platinum on another body, Ooh. Uh, 24 copper pieces on another body, uh, and 34 silver pieces on uh, another corpse uh and uh crispy you were looking at velov's body yep okay so he's got various uh things on him including uh a rapier that it doesn't look too fancy uh and he's got daggers he's got a bunch of normal daggers a crossbow, and he's got a card. Uh, ignore the writing, but that's what it looks like. Okay. Can you see it? Yep. Mm-hmm. It's well. of a man hanging upside down. He's probably alive and loving his life. But, mm -hmm. uh, uh, Prodi or Nihilus, do you, are you, can uh, I see, can I see it again? Are you like looting stuff next to Crispy? Oh, I was well, counting up how I was going to divide the gold. Rod. I am prodding some bodies with my rod. Yeah. So you Ew. guys see the card and it's a very similar art style to what you've seen previously from your travels uh -huh. from the other two. Do, do okay. So originally, I believe um, Aradia was collecting those. Yep. Does she still have them? Um, she does, unless you got them from her. 
I didn't take anything from her, but I'll take it. Uh, Crispy, do you want to give it? I'm holding on to it, like looking at it. Oh well, Nihilus <laughs> just <laughs> just goes <laughs> and snaps it out of his hand. Do you know what this uh what that card is, Nihilus? Um, it means nothing no, to me. I I don't, but we found a few of these already, so I feel like I should be collecting them, not you. I don't mind. It means nothing to me. Just a piece of paper. I mean, I it means nothing to me either, but I'm starting a collection. Uh, Sounds like it means something to you then. <laughs> you also find on Velov a pipe, like a smoking pipe, mm -hmm. uh, but there's no tobacco inside of it. Okay. And um, <clears throat> you also find studded leather armor and a so various trinkets and stuff, most of which um, you can collect them. There's probably like nine trinkets. This guy clinked around like a bell. Uh, but one, the most interesting trinket is a brooch on his uh, shoulder that has a uh, shark head on it. That's yeah, the most interesting, interesting. trinket. And, I'll grab it. and then on the other stuff... Um, on the other people you find, uh, two toy soldiers made of lead and wood, uh, in somebody's bag, half plate, chain mail that's rusty, real rusty, like maybe it's been in there for a while, and, um, also on Velov, you find a book. Uh, that's bound with, it's got leather engraving that's kind of flowery, uh, and on the inside of it, handwritten, it says the Inquisitor and the Countess. Uh, would you like to look through it further? Yeah, just the first couple pages. So it appears to be Inquisitor Velov was writing a romance novel Oh, oh god. About <laughs> about the countess uh which you know uh that countess Kalina uh was supposed to be her family has been in charge of the Viranal Dominion or uh however you'd like to word it uh until at, you guys thought for as long as You've known, but now that you know the Strani Acting Company is in charge and she may be alive or dead. But um, Velov has this romance novel, and do you want to keep reading it? Um, I don't want to keep reading it, but I definitely shut the bag. Did you put it in your bag? Yeah, for later. Okay. Um, and you also find an elixir that's kind of pink and rose-colored, and it's swirling around, changing colors between this light pink to a darker rose red. Um, it's a little tincture <laughs> potion bottle thing. Uh, but you don't know what it does unless any of you are have proficiency in alchemy. Nope. I have alchemy supplies. Mm, are you sure. proficient under your tools? Yeah. I have the supplies for it under my tools. Does that mean I'm proficient? Yes. Yeah, those are your proficiencies. Your equipment yes. would actually show your supply. Like if you have a kit, like actual, if you have the physical alchemist supplies. Yeah, you're proficient. Uh, yes. Um, Ashwin, you're not like trying to hide it, Crispy, right? No, in fact, when I find out, I, when I realize I don't know what it is, I look to the group and go, hey, any of y'all seen this uh, pink and rose stuff before? Looks Ashwin, like some fancy liquid. Ashwin, you look at it, and you're you know exactly what it is. It is uh, a elixir of love. Oh, yeah, that's a love elixir. <laughs> love okay. elixir. Okay, but how does it work? Drink it and find out. I like, uh. uh I don't need what? that in my life right now. So <laughs> I'm I'm good. Uh, if anybody wants wants that, feel yeah, Nihilus is gonna take it. 
And drink it? Not drink it. You just I need to find it? out. I'm going to take it as in hold on to it. Ashwin, it's up to you if you let him. I, I mean, I don't have any use for it. Okay. Mm, see, there you go. <laughs> you should drink it, though. You should. I think it's good. I'm not going to drink it. Drink I it. I think I'm... You're trying to trick me. You're trying to trick me, and I think I'm supposed to make someone else drink it, or maybe we're supposed to share the drink. I don't know. I love this supposed to. You just do whatever you want. Do Pull an Orson and jump into a bag of holding. Do whatever you want to do. If I was trying to lie to you, I would have told you it was the bad potion. Okay, well, what happens if I drink it? Find out. <laughs> there you go. Mm -mm, no, no, Mama told me not to trust land animals. Proudy will drink it. God. Drink it. I think it tastes like bubble gum. All right. Alice will hand it to Proudy. Uh, Proudy takes it. He takes a sip of his perpetual gin first. Says, "Bottoms up." Takes the love potion, and he kind of like he kind of like gets a little bit on his beak, and he wipes it back in. <laughs> okay, and it tastes yeah, it tastes like uh, tastes like bubble gum. Yeah, perfect. How do you feel, Proudy? Feel pretty good. Um, As Jake scrambles yeah. to find the. <laughs> <laughs> Uno momento. Lo siento mucho. It's um, kind of got a nice um, aftertaste. I'm, I'm getting a little bit of, getting a little bit of chocolate, a little bit of starburst. See, that's that actually good. sounds rather nice. What was that, Ashwin? I didn't lie. I told you it was okay. <laughs> kind yeah, of wish don't. I don't don't always you know take Nihilus so seriously you know he just he doesn't <laughs> like anybody. All right, so you know I counted up, I counted up the money and I'm dividing it out. Everyone gets five gold. Nice. And I'm keeping the change. So Figures. a couple of questions for Can you, you know? Prodi. Oh, sorry, Ashwin. What? Oh, I interrupted you. Go ahead. He's saying, can you count right? Are you sure that's how much mm -hmm. we get? Mm-hmm. Uh-huh. That's mm -hmm. not very convincing. Yeah. Christy, and I think you need to count for him. I don't think they teach water people how to count. Wow. Water people? Okay. <laughs> okay, 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 rodents. <laughs> Oh man, she could totally kick your ass. By the way, like <laughs> not even a problem. <laughs> well, by my mouth, by, by my math, when I when I saw the coins all fall out like a uh, rain man, um, I I feel like there was probably about twenty eight gold in that pile total. Yeah, it was twenty seven gold, four silver, and four copper. But there was what one platinum the in there too, right? which is uh, ten gold. Okay, yeah, so you already did that conversion. Yeah. And you split it. You split it five ways. Yes, and then I kept the change, which I said I would. <laughs> I wasn't cheating anyone. I was being very yeah, honest. That, doesn't that mean you got like ten or something, and we all got five? He got no, like I got seven, five. and we got five. Oh, uh, okay, got no, it. No, I got four silver and four copper extra. Got it. Got it. Okay. So, Prati, I need to ask you a couple of questions. Um, what type of creatures is Prati attracted to? Oh, all of them. Good, good question. Um, definitely attracted to to uh, Kenkus with uh, feathers with really long <laughs> feathers. <laughs> and um i speak uh what i speak gnomish so i spent a lot of time around gnomes and i'm really into little cute gnomes what if, what about um anybody currently in front of you oh uh, humans <laughs> mouse folk triton or pig farmer and the way is the a way, pig farmer uh, not a human it's a human Oh. It's a human. That's okay. The way uh, you know, Crispy was 
was attacking <laughs> even though i i could only see i could only see you know out of the corner of my eye and kind of around the plant how much damage he was doing but just the way he <laughs> fights oh man i'm you know uh just so you know nihilus will not have that <laughs> <laughs> so uh you feel this warm sensation like you've just met the love of your life when you drink that potion and now you are charmed. <laughs> nice. Uh, which means uh, Crispin has advantage on charisma checks <laughs> against you. <laughs> uh, Great. Well, we wasted that love potion. <laughs> And uh, all of it. Oh, that's uh, how think... potions work. Usually, you just chug the whole bottle. It's just a little bottle. Yeah, there's not much know, in there. I know. No, it's big. When you, you were holding it, but you're <laughs> you're really small. <laughs> okay, so um, unless there's nothing else, I will grab hold of the reins for a second. Everybody, good. Yep. yep. Okay. We link arms and start skipping down the road again with Ashwin sitting on the Perfect. <laughs> That's how we're wizard of Ozing our way through. Uh, and this is what we're going to do. <laughs> and I'm going to tell you exactly what we're going to do just so you're not confused as to how this is... Uh, completely confused as to how this is working. We're going to do a skill challenge. And uh, in your searching for Alu, you're coming up on Glodopole... And you come over this bridge, it's a very old bridge, rocks are falling away, and you're entering this town, which is a gothic town, and it's much, much busier than Pruyets was. Um, and there's, the, the main feature is that there's a wall uh, down the center of the town um, going from west to east. Uh, it doesn't seem to be... Like, there's holes in it now, so there's someone has made gates in it. But on one side, it there's stuff just jammed on it that's petrified. And then on the other side, there's, like, fungus and mold, dead mold, some places on the other side of the, the uh, wall going down the middle of the town. Also, on your way into town, you started noticing these um, 30-foot-tall cairns of not rock, but of petrified wood. Um, and they're spaced out pretty far. You would need to make an intelligence check if you wanted to know, try and guess how uh, far apart they were spaced. Uh, if you want to do that, do that, and I will just continue talking. Um, and in this town, the first thing I need, so the way the skill challenge is going to work is... Um, you're looking for Alu. You've heard various things from various people you've asked so far in here. Um, you found the Oblex that kind of looked like Alu. It was his half of it was melted. So Nihilus and Prodi knew from previous experience with Oblexes that they create simulacrums or, or just melt, turn into creatures they absorb fully. So maybe it didn't get a fully, didn't fully absorb it. Anyway, so you know you're looking for, like, possibly... You have the description of this guy, possibly very disfigured. Uh, and you, you're in the town of Glodepol. And make a... So we're going to use primary skills, your skills on your character sheet. And each one of you um, can only use one skill once for various things. So you will say things like... Um, uh, I want to go to the inn and use persuasion. So you will always use a skill to do this. It doesn't have to be if it's a if you're it's a social thing. It doesn't have to be a charismatic thing. Like it can be persuasion, but let's say this particular NPC, like you, want to impress it with your history knowledge. I want to use my history skill that I'm proficient in. And you have to use a skill that you're proficient in, by the way. I didn't mention that. Um, and you're going to make these checks, and you need six successes 
uh, to kind of move the plot along in some way. Uh, okay. And depending on how many successes or failures you get will change the results of things. So you're in this town. You can make a check like, I want to figure out where I might start this investigation and search for Alu. Um, then I would say make an investigation check if you're proficient in it. And one of you would do that. And there would be a DC set based on your role. You might get a success or failure out of that. And then I will give you more information, um, possibly a scenario. And then you will be like, I want to use stealth to do this. I want to use something else. Uh, All right. So feel free to ask questions of me if uh, you want to know if you can use a certain skill. Just make sure you're proficient in that skill. And you can only use them once. So if you want to start off with an investigation check, whoever is proficient in that. Sure. I'm, I'm proficient not. in it. If... One person will roll. So Prodi, once you roll that investigation check, you cannot make an investigation check the rest of this challenge. Is that is everyone good with that? Yep. Yeah. Prodi offers somewhere. to investigate. Ugh. Um, Ten. Uh, okay, and so you're investigating, you guys are going around the town, and people are looking at you, it's kind of, uh, they're clearly looking at it, at you like, who are these newcomers uh, with bug eyes and a melted, <laughs> melted face, uh, and a pig farmer with a bleeding face. I don't know why I keep focusing on that, probably because I'm playing Orson. Um, and... You uh, make it to an inn, a tavern, and it is called uh, Richton's Reserve. Oh, I already wrote it down. Uh, and it's a pretty busy tavern. Uh, this is somewhat a welcome sight to you guys since being in Priets a day ago. Go ahead. Um, can we take a quick five-minute break? Because I really have to pee pee. Sure. <laughs> Thank you. We'll take a break. Before we get into all of it. Okay, sure. Yeah, Roll yeah. for it. No. Fiverr.
You're welcome. <laughs> yeah, we just got to get to the bottom of, of Nihilus. Uh, no. We will go to the bottom of the ocean to find the bottom <laughs> of Nihilus. Uh, welcome back after the break. Dave, you keep your mic off and you keep eating that pita bread. Uh <laughs> Where we left off was Dave made an investigation check in this skill challenge. He failed it with a 10. And mm -hmm. uh, one of you can make another investigation check if you are proficient. Is not any... me. I'm oh. not zero. Oh, I forgot. Orson's here. <laughs> Hi, Orson. He's definitely not. So this is what's... Uh, you can pick a different skill proficiency and give me a way that that will help you kind of begin your investigation into finding where Al uh, Alu might be. Well, I'm going to use the, uh, the, the roof access on the inn, and I'll give a good look around the city from a high vantage point. Okay. And see if I can kind of spot a likely part of the city that we should be looking in. Cool. So make a... Um, I'm shooting for perception based on my proficiencies. Yeah, and if you want to, if you just want to use perception, that's fine. Uh, do you have stealth proficiency? Oh, I have stealth. If you want to give yourself advantage on that stealth proficiency, uh, but keep in mind, if you use the stealth proficiency, you won't be able to use it again. Mm hmm So if you want to... Um, so I could have stealth with advantage, I could do stealth with advantage or perception without advantage. Uh... Correct. Or are you just saying correct? Stealth but uh, you would do stealth okay. to get on the building, and that would have a DC set. So um, if you fail it, that will give you disadvantage on the perception check, as you fail to be gotcha. stealthy, and people start looking at you, and you start panicking, and people take notice of this dude climbing on roofs. Or if you make it, you nobody notices you, and you have no nobody gives you shit while you're perceiving from this high vantage point. So which one do you okay. want to do? I'll do stealth with advantage. Um, wow, well, that wasn't a great advantage. It was a six and a seven, teen. Uh, so the stealth wouldn't be with advantage, but um, you would just roll... thirteen. Then. Well, I rolled two. It was a thirteen and a fourteen for okay. stealth. Uh, we're... now I see what you're saying. Okay, that was just the DC for your stealth, so you made that one, and that's not a success, but you get now on your perception check, now that you're on the roof, you've made your way to the highest point you can find without being seen, and uh, make a perception check with advantage. Got it. Not 20 plus 6, 26. Cool, so that will be two successes on a natural 20. So now you have two successes and one failure. Uh, and what you find up there is you see a, another uh, one of these brain creatures uh, that you've seen on the road following someone else get near a person, and the person fell to the ground, and then that thing disappeared, the brain disappeared, similar to what you saw earlier, and the body that was unconscious rose back up and started walking. And um, from that vantage point, it's hard to make it out. They have their back to you. You're pretty far away. Uh, okay. But that's what you see. And the reason that this uh, drew your attention to it was this guy was kind of walking with a very pronounced limp um, and m matched the description that they told you of Alu in stature. But you can't, gotcha. like, tell his yeah, face or anything. Sure. Well, not caring if people see me at this point. I shout that down to the rest of the group. One in the direction <laughs> and I say, Brain creature eating people over that way. Okay. From the roof. And, um... And you said it looked like Alu? You can't see... He couldn't see the face, but the, stat, the description of the stature of Alu... And right. uh, also the fact that he was limping pronouncedly, which may lead you to think that Alu may Alu be disfigured. But, but yeah. Alu's missing an arm, right? Yeah, that's what I'm looking for. If yeah, we know that. Arm. So if he's missing an arm, then check. Oh, you froze. What? But I couldn't see that. Oh, um, just, I couldn't make out if it, if it definitely yeah. was not based oh. on what I did. Okay. 
Uh, so your next uh, deal would be uh, yelling that out from the top of a roof. People start to take uh, notice of you. And mm-hmm. um, you see from that vantage point also that there's various floating heads, green and purple and red, with four eye stalks coming out of them hmm. uh, that are matched with two humanoids that are wearing similar garb. They may be constables. It's it's that type of garb, uh, mm-hmm. police type uh garb and um a particular group of them starts making their way towards your group so how would you like what skill would everyone like to possibly use (laughs) can i do like a persuasion to you're proficient in it you can have them leave us alone and (laughs) let us continue you absolutely can a loo looker okay i'll oh that's that's wonderful. It's a 12 total. Total? Okay. Yeah, I got a six. Uh, that's a failure. Um, they're going to question you further and ask that you go with them to the, uh, to the central uh, police area, the central police department. Why can't I think of the word I'm looking for? Anyway, so would someone like to use a different skill? I have a question. Sure. Um. Uh, so the proficient ones are the like the black dots. Yep. But what if like a half black, half white dot? Half proficiency. Is that okay. a champion yeah. thing? Why would you have half proficiency? Yeah, though? that's a good question. As a champion. The only one that I that has that are bards. I thought. Yeah. Um. No idea. I just have several half ones. Interesting. Fascinating. I'm going to look at your character sheet now. <laughs> so I'm like, if I could use it, then can I stealth away? We already use stealth. Uh, right? can't use it again. I use stealth, he so used. I can't. Oh, individually we could. Okay. So essentially, when you make these checks, uh, so Nihilus, you just made a persuasion check, and it's like right. all of you were trying to persuade uh narratively all of you in this skill challenge except we're having one person do it so um so you couldn't use Crispin's stealth modifier but you could use uh somebody else's stealth modifier to essentially get away from them while they're taking you back uh while you're following them back to the police department so yes you can use stealth again um and in this situation, it would give you advantage in another check. So you could, after you make a successful stealth check, you could say, I want to make a deception check now to tell them that whatever creatively your character wants to deceive them about uh, to get away from them. Is that making sense right. at all? Mm-hmm. Um, half proficiency. She she does have it. I, I posted it in the chat. Uh, but remarkable athlete champions get half proficiency on some things. Oh, cool. Champions. Uh, it's a good subclass. So, any strength, dex, or con check that doesn't already have proficiency. Yeah. Um, w- would you guys like to use a secondary skill like sleight of hand, stealth? Or something like that. Or would you like to just go straight for a primary skill, which would net you a failure or a success? And the primary skill would be Arcana, Deception, Insight, Investigation, Persuasion, Intimidation, or Perception. Uh, obviously, those that have used any of those in the skill challenge can't use them again. So you still have Deception. I don't, you haven't used that yet. Anybody proficient in Deception? I mean, I have a plus three, but it's not proficient. Yeah, so you can't use it. Yeah, not. Not me. So think about what you're proficient in, the skills uh, on your character right. sheet, and think about how you might use that skill to get out of this situation. Well, I, I would 
I'm still up on the roof, so I would like to, like, it's not a primary skill, though, from what you said. I would do acrobatics to start free running uh, towards what I saw on rooftops to get away from the, the things. Yeah. Um, yeah, like, I've, I'm proficient in stealth. Can I just use stealth and go past them? Uh, yeah, and that would be for everyone. That's a secondary skill, so that will get you advantage on it. In this situation, acrobatics would be a primary uh, okay. skill, so... Uh, for you guys to essentially parkour your way out of there. So, if Dave, you want to roll stealth for the group. Um... <laughs> oh, god damn. Uh, uh, let's see, nine. Okay, so that will... <laughs> Jesus Christ, guys. Um, that will give you disadvantage on the next skill you guys use so that's going to be acrobatics <laughs> disadvantage ouch okay go ahead and roll it Sorry. I, I can take the lead on that okay. yeah uh, with disadvantage that is a 16 that'll work so that's a success you guys uh break away from these two three the spectator and the two guards and um, manage to, I don't know, how would you guys talk, meet me around the back? I don't know. Um, we uh, just, you know. Sure. People in this group can message. <laughs> oh, yeah. Um, <laughs> who's... But we do this. We do the I, I'm now. the only one who doesn't. <laughs> well, we gave one, I gave mine to Ashwin, so I, you can't message me. I have to, like, initiate messaging to you. Right. Yeah. Other so, than that, it works. Fine. So Orson will stay with Ashwin, and you guys are all amazing parkourists. Is that even a, the proper form of that uh, verb or noun? I don't even know. Anyways, so you get away sure from these guys. Yeah. You get away from these guys. And now you think you're pretty safe. Uh, no longer uh, have caught their eye. So, you have three successes, two failures, you need three successes more, and you don't need another failure. And um, you can use, so right now, uh, you know the location of where that th creature brain thing was with the limping person. Mm -hmm. um, what skill would you like to use to get back to that area and... Um, so if you can't use stealth, maybe you can use um, uh, Arcana to make a illusion over there to distract people or something. If you want to burn a spell slot, um, that would uh, help you in that regard in terms of lowering the DC. Like if you have major illusion or something, or major image, um, you could use that in that situation. So what is skills? Skills. Well, could what if, I mean, if we do something like that, because I'm proficient in Arcana, um, if I ca cast like Thaumaturgy and cause like a loud boom in an area to have everyone kind of like look that way, yeah. would that work for everyone? Or is someone... That sounds great. Any other ideas? I'm also proficient in Arcana, so... I'm a plus three. What are you? Plus five. Oh, you're probably better. You do it. But <laughs> you, you don't, I don't have, have the that, same. But... I don't have the same. Uh, so I should just cast something that makes a loud noise somewhere. Do you have maybe like dancing lights or something well, with illusion or something? Could it be teamwork? I've got. I've got cast a spell got while you're casting. <laughs> oh, um, what was that, Crispin? Well, you you cast your spell, create the distraction while he pays attention to whatever is going. Figure something. You're breaking up a little bit. Oh, really? <laughs> Saying you cast your spell and make the mm -hmm. distraction, paying attention to what's going on, see if you, but, you know, susses something else out. Yeah, I've got I've got infestation. I can create a cloud of bugs. Oh, yeah, that'll work. That could... um, Brian, you might have a filter. Still not working? No, 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 but, but this has happened a few times. After the stream, try and figure out if you have a uh, a gate on your mic that essentially will mute you yeah. under a certain decibel range. 
So, mm. like, when you talk, it will cut you off if you're under a certain decibel range. Maybe that's a problem. Yeah, I'll look. Um, I don't think I do. I've had this for a while, but okay. I'll look. Uh, yes, Prodi, that would work. So, go ahead and roll Arcana. So, okay. you're using infestation yeah. to cause a ruckus. Nice. Okay, 18. It's another success. This This infestation... You get it around like some some market stalls where they're selling various goods and there's the biggest concentration of people and people start freaking out, knocking stuff over, causing the local fuzz to investigate. And this allows you to get to where that uh, brain and person was and you get up to the door where they went into. It's, it's going down into like a cellar. Uh, now that you're closer to it, you guys, it's a cellar door, and now there's a door in front of you while this ruckus is going on. Um, what skill would you like to use to get into this door? Uh, hmm. Can I, can I, is it locked? Uh, yes. I can unlock it. Do you have sleight of hand proficiency? Yep, I okay. have to use tools. Let's do it. Not 20 again, plus 7, 27. Perfect. So that's two successes, and you guys are successful in the skill challenge. And... Uh, just so you guys know, I do have a pretty pretty successful locksmithing business. So, <laughs> <laughs> uh, Yeah, I don't think you told Nihilus about that, uh, so he doesn't know either. Um, anyways. Uh... Well, it came up organically, okay? So I'm not trying to just <laughs> tell everyone about it, but... Yeah, I have a locksmithing business now. And it's doing well. <laughs> Big profit. As all this is going on and you guys are trying not to be seen. Crispy is so good at breaking into doors. Oh, yeah, I forgot about that. The love potion. Uh, Nihilus just like time. walks in between our door. <laughs> yeah, Nihilus makes sure just... that he's always in between the two of them. <laughs> just look at him go. Look at him go through that door. Oh, man. I got a nat 20 on my perception. <laughs> I parkoured everything. I got a nat 20 on this. Yeah. Uh, Prodi, are you, like, moving Nihilus out of the way because he's trying to get in between you two? Get out of here, Nihilus. I don't want to see my most terrifying image. I want to see my bow. <laughs> it's perfect. So I could watch him parkour all day. <laughs> what is wrong with me? His eyes are bugging out because he literally has bug eyes now. <laughs> what is wrong with me? <laughs> um, so entering the cellar, you find uh, the body that you were, f the person you were following is on the ground. And um, there is a uh, something in the corner that's floating uh, that's got stalks coming out of it, but it's very dark down there, and it smells mildewy, and this person is on the ground. So you guys, do you get closer to this person you're following? Yeah. It's You turn him over, and it's Alu. Uh, yes! His face is melted, uh, like it's been sucked, like part of him's been su sucked out, uh, but he's not breathing. And behind you in the cellar, um, this woman comes down, uh, middle-aged woman, um, short hair, like kind of bob length, uh, but she's got a, st a staff and she's got long uh, gloves on, elbow length gloves and um, she's got a a shawl. What's the thing that, like, for funerals? A veil. Veil, thank you, Jesus. Um, she's got a black veil over her face, and coming down the cellar, she says, oh, you, you tracked it down, did you? You guys say anything? Um, yeah, yeah, I, I, I slowly pull my slay Can I cast healing light on him? Uh, looking down, when you begin to cast your healing light, you, the magic or the celestial power within you that you are about to give into this creature, um, 
you realize it will do nothing because he is not a humanoid. You look down, you start to notice stitched together pieces, similar to what you saw on the beach in Anista. It's a flesh golem, and Alu seems to have been a flesh golem, and uh, this woman says, yes, by now you know that that creature has been sent here by Tricknips or Avner Bree or someone in that group. He always sends his golems and constructs to do his dirty work, but uh, I'm glad you found it. Uh, does anyone want to... Uh, that floating thing in the corner is still there, um, and it might be coming closer. Well, I have my flail out, uh, ready, for, ready to rumble. I would... I would like to ask, um, I mean, does the woman see it? She doesn't seem to be bothered by it. By the, by the balloon? The floating thing. She says to you, uh, if you say something to her about it, like, uh... Yeah, I'm gonna say, what's that? Uh, she says that's a gas spore, uh, and constructs like me don't have issues with it, with those type of things, but if you're humanoid it may poison you um and at this point it's right up on you guys uh and you see now that it's a fungal representation of a beholder it's uh got spores sticking or mushrooms sticking out of its head the top of its head similar in a representation of the eye stalks of a beholder um mm. and it's got a one sec how so, close are we? This is a very confined space, so it's how close are we to the door and is it still open? Yeah. It's still open, um, but you wouldn't be able to investigate Alu anymore if you know Oh, I'm just I just was wondering I I want it to like cast maybe like gust of wind to like push the creature out of the door and just like close the door. Uh yeah, you can I want to touch it. I want to get poisoned. <laughs> you can do that. Um but let's roll um initiative real quick. Okay. Oh, Jesus Christ. Wow. Come on. I like guys. having an advantage. 25 to 20. 20 to 20 to 15. 19. 15 to 10. 14. 13. 10 to 5. 6. Prati, you act first. This it's right. It's within five feet of you guys. It's right on top of you. This gas spore. Um, you see that the the uh, fungus is is kind of trying to make a representation of a central eye, similar to what you saw in the spectators, but it's not an uh, a full on uh, eye. Hmm. What would you um, like to do? I'm gonna cast witch bolt. So let's that's see a save, here. right? Um, or is it an attack? I think it's an attack. It's an attack, okay. yeah. Roll it. Armor class of five. Oh, okay. <laughs> uh, let's see. I'm trying to figure out what I actually have to roll for this. Um, I rolled a 15, so yeah. So it's a, let's see, it's a beam of crackling blue energy lances out toward the creature, and then it takes one, it takes 4d12. Okay, uh, Prati unleashes this, this bolt of electricity, and this thing explodes in a green puff of, <laughs> of spory disgusting fungi 
And so if you would, tell me in the form of, just so I get a, a around the body of, of Alu, where would each of you have been, have been as if it were a clock? So tell me where you would put your character on a clock if the center... Nine o'clock. Okay, nine o'clock. Anyone? Five o'clock. Okay. Actually, no. I'm gonna be. I'm gonna be ten o'clock. I want to be right up next to Chris. This is getting closer to the spore. <laughs> Hot and heavy. Uh... Six. So you're at six. Is that what you said, Ashwin? Yeah. Okay. Midnight. <laughs> Or noon. <laughs> it's a 24-hour clock. <laughs> so 24. Okay, and uh, Orson is there. Iris is unaffected. Prodi Nihilus Crispin. Uh, make a constitution saving throw. So... I don't have to calculate the damage from Witch Bolt. No, it had one hit point. Oh, okay, I got it. Well, Eight. that was a waste. I got a five. We're about to get hurt. Mm -hmm. Oh, I got a four. <laughs> Jesus <laughs> Christ, guys. Okay. We're looking real good, you guys. You take ten poison damage. Each? Each. And you have a condition What's... called oh, okay. disease. And you're infected by these fungal spores as they course through your system. And um, also roll, what's your constitution uh, score? Like the actual number, not the modifier. 14. Nihilus Prodi. Wait, I'm sorry, what? What is your constitution score? Like the number, not your... Oh, 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 oh. Uh, 15. 11. All right, so now you guys need to take that number that for your character and roll a d12 and add that to the d12, what you roll on the d12. Jeez. 24. Oh. Uh, 22. Or sorry, 21. 27. What was yours, Prodi? I'm sorry. 21. Okay. So, in that amount of hours, I'm just going to tell you. Uh, actually, Iris says, yeah, so you guys, if you're affected, it looks like you guys are. Um... In about 24 hours, it's actually the amount of hours you rolled there. That number is the amount of hours. Um, those spores are going to fully probably kill you and uh, create more of these gas bubbles. So you need to get that removed uh, with a some sort of magic or alchemy mm -hmm. or something. And uh, you guys are have this condition. Mark it on your character sheet of diseased... And that's where we're going to leave it for today. Episode 22 of Venture Ventures. People getting sick. But you found Alu. And now you're no longer in danger. So you can prod the body and find out what he had on him and stuff like that. Uh, and you have the new person next to you who introduced yourself as Iris. Uh, mm -hmm. And that's where we're going to leave it. Thank you so much for joining us. Um... Let's start with you, Richard. If you want to plug anything, go ahead. Oh, yeah, sure. Uh, hi, my name is Richard Cardona. Um, You can catch me on two different podcasts, uh, Interview with a Nerd, also uh, Awkward Human Survival Guide. And in the coming week, I will be posting a new episode with uh, Ryan Omega. I interviewed oh. him on the LARPing. And yeah, so we, get, we, 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 talk, we talk about LARP. Fantastic. Uh, Brian, anything? Nope, my name's Brian, and I just like playing D&D. &D. <laughs> just don't change that. 
My name's Brian. I like ping, playing D&D. &D. Uh, it <laughs> makes me laugh. Uh, Prody? <laughs> or Dave, I'm sorry. Yeah, um, the only thing to plug is just my Twitter account, just drod3. If you want to hit me up there. Great. Lex. If not, oh, sorry. I love D&D &D also. And Crispin. <laughs> Stop it. Now that you're sick, it probably wore off. Like, it was towards the end of the filter's life, but now that you're sick, it definitely wore off and you're more focused on... What was I thinking making this collage for Crispin? <laughs> <laughs> uh, Lex. Uh, you can find me on Instagram at it period underscore period Lex or on Twitter at it be Lex. Um, you could also find me at Scabby Rooster on Twitch. Uh, we're playing a new Starfinder game there. Oh, cool. Um, cool. What channel? Is that the channel? Scabby yeah. oh, okay. Rooster. All right. Perfect. I'll uh, add you guys to the hosting list. So when you guys play it, we'll host on Venture Ventures. Thank you for joining us. I'm Jake Friday. Uh, you can follow all of us on Twitter, and that is pinned on the Venture Ventures Twitter uh, account. So join us next time, next Sunday, where we will have a special guest, Lex's sister. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> Cynthia Ouch. from uh, Sirens of the Realms will be joining us as a guest. Uh, so stay tuned for that 4 p.m. Pacific next Sunday. Thank you so much. Be excellent to yourself and excellent to...